All right, welcome back. So today we are going to be looking at solution concentration or concentration of solution. Uh, so this is going to be the, I guess, calculation portion of this particular unit. Um, so of course, this is like some old definitions of certain things. So we have a solution is just a solvent and a solute and of course in aqueous solutions. Um, so aqueous solutions, the solvent is water. So that's what the word aqueous means. So whenever you see the word aqueous, it means water is there. Now, what a concentration is. So this is just a way to compare the amount of solute, so the chemical being dissolved, and the amount of solvent, and of course usually water. So this ratio uh, between solute and solvent, oh, well, this is the concentration. So typically concentration is represented in the following. Uh, so we have concentration is the quantity of the solute, so things being dissolved, and the quantity of the solution. Uh, so of course we're going to learn a bunch of different types of concentrations. So molar concentration, percent weight to volume, percent volume to volume, parts per million, all that stuff. But it's all going to be the same where you have the quantity of the solute is going to be on top, and the quantity of our solution, so how much solution is actually there is going to be on the bottom. Um, now another thing you might read is these words, so dilute and concentrated. Um, so these are just two terms that describe the relative concentration of a solution. Um, so, uh, what that means is that if solution is dilute, it has very few um, solute particles per unit volume. If something we call concentrated, it has many or a lot of solute particles per unit volume. So what that means, like for example, if I'm using, let's just say, this purple dot dot is equal to solute particle. Oops, can't got to spell particle right. So if this little purple dot is a solute particle and we want to represent a concentrated solution. So to say this is the volume up to here, so both flasks are going to have the exact same volume of solution. Now for a concentrated solution, we are going to see many solute particles inside of this volume. Just like this. So this is kind of a representation of how a concentrated solution will look. Now we compare that to a dilute, it's going to have very few solute particles. So it's just kind of a visual representation um, when we talk about concentrated, so it's going to have a lot of solute particles, whereas a dilute one is going to have very few. So there's going to be three main ways which we're going to look at in today's lesson. Um, I'm representing concentration solution. So first one is the amount concentration molarity or molar concentration, and this one is used, this is the most important. And try to have this formula memorized. So this is a very important formula for chemists. Um, so I know you guys are going to be able to have your book set and stuff like this as you're going through, so you can always reference it. But if you're going to remember one formula from here on out, this one will be very important. And it's going to show up in the next unit as well. Uh, so this is for chemists the most common way to express concentration. So the amount concentration is the amount in moles of solute dissolved in one liter of solution. So we have our formula right here, concentration is N over V, where concentration, the units is moles per liter. So if you pay attention to the units, we know N is always gonna be moles, that is always the case, but we notice liters show up, so the volume needs to be in liters. So that means if you are reading a question for our first example right here, if we have 0 0.186 moles of potassium hydroxide dissolved in 250 milliliters of solution, Remember, we divide by 1,000 to get 0 0.250 liters, right? So that is going to be the first thing that we should always do in our minds is convert milliliters to liters. So, of course, this one's asking for what is the molar concentration. Uh, so always write down the given information. So N is equal to 0 0.186 moles. V is equal to 250 milliliters, which we convert it right away into 0 0.250 liters. C is equal to, we don't know. So we know our equation, C is equal to N over V. We look at the information that we have. We have N, so 0 0.186 moles. V 
we have 0 0.250 liters, and C in this case right here is equal to 0 0.744 moles per liter, and of course we have three significant digits because we have one, two, three here, and of course one, two, three there. Now, uh, what can show up is that not every single time you are going to be given and number of moles. Uh, there is another equation that we've learned, actually two different equations we learned for number of moles, um, and that is, I'm just gonna write this up here for you guys, so remember, our equation for number of moles, we have two other ones, so N is equal to um, mass over molar mass as well. Now the other one I was thinking of is the ideal gas law. PV is equal to NRT, the N shows up there, but we won't need it for this unit because we can't really get gases into solutions. Um, well, that we'll see anyway. Uh, so this is the other equation, if you remember, N shows up, right? Very important here. So that means that because where we, we can take stuff and dissolve them in water, like just think we dissolve sugar in water, we can dissolve salt in water. So it makes sense where we can get an example like this, five grams of sodium chloride, which is salt, is dissolved in 500 milliliters of water. What is the molar concentration of that solution? Uh, so in this case right here, we're given mass is equal to 5.00 grams. Molar mass, right? Because remember, whenever we're given mass, we should always write molar mass next. Uh, so for sodium chloride, um, so it's molar mass of sodium chloride is NaCl, right? Remember, do your drop and swap to get the formula, uh, just in case. So the molar mass for this one is one sodium and one chlorine. Uh, so when we look at our periodic table, right? Right here, sodium is 22.99, one chlorine is 35.45. So we add two of those together, and of course we're going to get a molar mass of 58.44 grams per mole. Now we're also given volume, it's 500 milliliters, and remember we always convert milliliters to liters, and that's 0 0.500 liters, so we divide by 1,000, and it's asking for concentration. Now, of course, this step right here is very similar to a lot of the gas stuff where even though we're not directly given number of moles because we are given a mass, we can solve for it. So this turns into a two-step question. So step one, find number of moles. In this case right here, we take our 5.00 grams of sodium chloride and divide by the molar mass, 58.44 grams per mole, and we get... 0 0.085558 moles. And of course, step two is going to be solve. Find the concentration. So concentration is number of moles divided by our volume. So you take our 0 0.085558 moles and divide by the volume 0 0.500 liters and we are left with, in this case right here, we have 0 0.171 moles per liter, and of course, three significant digits. And of course, our units moles per liter matches. Um, so depending on what type you are given, you can either be given one like this where you're given moles, but if you're not given moles, just remember if you are given grams, you have the ability to still solve for concentration. It's just gonna have to be in a two-step method. So um, the next style of concentration question uh, that we can possibly get is going to be parts per million or PPM. So this is used for very dilute solutions to give a reasonable number for small quantities. So this is normally used in, um, in a lot of environmental chemistry. So even, well, you'll even notice like if you pick up any bottled water or something like this, if you look at at the side, um, they'll have, even mineral water will have this like stuff in parts per million for the concentration of certain ions. 
Um, now, the reason why it's called parts per million um, is for this because simplified because the mass is incorporated to have a factor of one million, which is 10 to the six. So our formula, just pay attention to the units here for the masses. So we have concentrations, mass of solute in grams, and this should be a times, not an arrow, times, um, or sorry, over the mass of the solution, also in grams, times 10 to the six. So this is factoring in that um, factor of one million, or we're going to use the concentration is mass of solute in milligrams, over the mass of the solution in kilograms. Because when you go from milligrams to kilograms, there is a factor of 10 to the six or one million between them. So depending on what you're given, um, you're either going to use this equation if you're given both the mass of the solute and the solution in grams, but if one's in milligrams and the other's in kilograms, you can use this equation right here. Uh, now also, just pay attention because what we have is one kilogram of water is actually equal to one liter. So a liter in a kilogram can be used interchangeably. So that means for our second equation right here, it's mass of solution kilograms or liters. And what we get for uh, the first right here, mass of solute in grams, it could be masses, grams, or milliliters as well. Uh, so those are just the units, so you just have to be a little careful for what you're using. Um, but either way, um, we'll just pay attention to it when we get to our first example. So our first example right here we have, we're measuring dissolved oxygen levels in a lake. There are 2.2 milligrams of oxygen measured in 300 milliliters of water. What is the concentration of oxygen in parts per million? So. What we have is this 2.2 milligrams of oxygen because this is what we're measuring, this is our solute. So we got our mass of our solute is equal to 2.2 milligrams. Mass of our, sorry, mass of our solution is equal to, in this case right here, we got 300.0 milliliters and concentration PPM is equal to, we don't know. Now, just by looking at what I have written up here. Now, if the mass of our solute is in grams, the mass of the solution can be in grams or milligrams. So we will notice that we have the mass of our solute is in milligrams. So the first equation I'm not gonna look at, I'm gonna look at the second equation here because mass of solute is in milligrams, which we have. But we need the mass of the solution in kilograms or liters. Notice that we have milliliters. But we do have the ability, because we've done it in our last questions as well, we just divide milliliters by 1,000. Oops, sorry. Um, and we can get our answer into liters, which works. So now we actually have the units we need. So we have units of milligrams for our solute and liters for our solution. So we can just use our equation, concentration, parts per million, is equal to mass of the solute in milligrams divided by mass or volume of the solution in liters. So we got concentration in parts per million, we got 2.2 milligrams divided by 0 0.300 liters. And when we do this, we should get an answer of 7.3 parts per million and our answer in two significant digits because of this right here. And that's how we solve our um, parts per questions. So if you want, um, it would be very handy to pause the video right now and try this one on your own. It's rearranging the formula or um, you can just keep watching it. I'm gonna go over it here as well. So example two, it says, what is the amount of dissolved mercury found in a 25.0 milliliter sample if environmental chemists discover that the water from string contains a lead concentration of 2.00 times 10 to the power of negative three parts per million? All right. Um, so this one right here, uh, same thing, you have to make sure to write down all of your information. So we have the amount of dissolved mercury. So this is obviously our solute. Um, we have 25 milliliter sample, this is our solution, and we have our concentration parts per million right here. So in this case, we don't know the mass of our solute. 
the mass of our solution is equal to 25.0 milliliters and concentration in parts per million is equal to 2.00 times 10 to the negative 3. Now, same thing, we can use any of the equations we want, the ones up above, it just depends on what we want to use. Now, in this case right here, we can use this right here because we are given the mass of our solute in our parts per million or milliliters. So that means we are going to have to factor in this 10 to the 6, which is fine. Uh, so we can do that, and then our answer should be in grams when we get it. Um, that's fine. Or we can just convert our solution into liters, and then our answer will be in milliliters. It's completely up to you. I personally in, like using this one better because I don't need to rely on that 10 to the 6. And I just remember that it's always milligrams per kilograms or milligrams per liter. So that's what I'm going to do with this one as well. So I'm just going to turn this 25 milliliters into 0 0.0250 liters. And we do that. So our equation, C, P, P, M, is equal to mass of our solute over mass of the solution. Now, in this case right here, we are going to have to solve for this, so we will need to rearrange the equation. So in order to do that, we have mass of solutions in the denominator, so in order to get rid of it, we do the opposite. That means we're going to have to multiply both sides by mass of solution. So our new equation, concentration, or sorry, mass of our solute is equal to concentration parts per million times mass of the solution. So I kind of ran out of a little bit of space here, but I'm just going to rectify this by kind of getting rid of this little area right here just so I can work down below. So if you got room in your own uh, please do that. So we're going to fill in our information. Mass of solute, concentration parts per million. We got 2.00 times 10 to negative 3. Mass of solution, 0 0.0250 liters. We get our mass of our solute is equal to, we get a very small number. So 0 0.0000500 milligrams. And of course, we are going to convert this into scientific notation because it's too small. So we have to move to decimals back one, two, three, four, five places. So we get 5.00 times 10 to negative 5 milligrams. And that is our answer. So that is the mass of the solute contained in there. All right. Now, of course, I did have to erase part of that question here. So what I'm going to do is, um, like, if you want to finish copying this down, please pause the video. But I'm just going to put this answer up here so we can see uh, the rest of the question. So that's going to happen now in a few seconds. All right. And, of course, for part B, it says, if the maximum concentration of mercury allowed in Canadian drinking water is 1.0 times 10 to the power of negative 3 parts per million, what is the maximum amount of mercury that can be found in a one in one liter of that water. So we are going to use the exact same formula that we derived up above, and that is mass of the solute is equal to concentration parts per million times mass of our solute solution. In this case right here, we have our concentration parts per million is 1.00 times 10 to the power of negative 3. Uh, we have our volume 1.0, and when we do this, we get 1.00 times 10 to the power of negative 3 milligrams. So that is the maximum amount of lead that can be found in drinking water. Uh, so that's, of course, how we solve our parts per million stuff. Now, our last type of equation is going to be our percent concentration. Now there are two of these here, so we have percent volume to volume concentration and percent weight to volume. So two of these are basically the same, the only difference is uh, the units. So in this case right here where we have percent volume to volume, 
uh, we have our kind of our formula here. So volume of the solute over volume of the solution. This should be a times, not a double arrow. I don't know why that double arrow came up, but it should be a times 100%. So just think as the normal you know percentage calculation. The only thing you have to make sure with these here is that the volume of both the solution and the solute are the same. So you can have milliliters and milliliters or liters and liters. It doesn't matter as long as they're the exact same. Uh, so for example, in our first one, we have volume of our pure acetic acids dissolved in a 500 milliliter bottle of solution. So obviously the volume of our solute is the acetic acid. So that's 140.0 milliliters. The volume of our solution is our total bottle right there. So 500.0 milliliters and volume percent um, vo percent volume to volume or sorry that's the wrong interpretation right here so we have concentration um, volume over volume or percent is equal to well in this case right here we don't know but we have our concentration percent volume to volume or volume percent to percent it doesn't really matter I like to use the subscripts here you don't really need to you can just use C like it is right here in the equation. But we have the volume of our solute over the volume of our solution times 100%. Just think this times 100 is just there to make it a percent, just like when you figure out the percents on your test, right? you always have to multiply by that 100, and that's the reason that that is there. Uh, so we have 140.0 milliliters divided by 500.0 milliliters times 100 and we get our answer in this case right here when we plug everything in should get 28.00 percent now the reason we do that 0 0.00 is because we need four significant digits because of this and of course that now the last one uh, percent weight to volume it's the exact same thing. We do have that, shouldn't be a double arrow, it should be multiplied by 100% there. But now we have a mass of a solute and volume of solution. Now just pay attention to the units here. We have grams per milliliter and kilograms per liters. So it's the exact same combination or setup of our parts per million. Uh, just to kind of refresh your memory when we look back at parts per million, uh, it's when we had this one, so the mass of the solute solution could have been in kilograms or liters, so kilograms and liters were interchangeable, and grams and milliliters were interchangeable. And of course, the reason for this is the density of water. So of course, when we're doing this one right here, we need to have the units the same, so grams and milliliters or kilograms and liters. And it completely depends on the information that you're given, what you want to use. So in this case right here, when we read through, we have a silver nitrate solution has in a 13.0 milliliters, and the solution contains 11 grams of pure silver nitrate. So we have the mass of our solute is equal to 11.0 grams. The volume of our solution is equal to 13.0 milliliters, and concentration percent weight to volume is equal to we don't know. So we have our equation like so. Now before I start plugging everything in, I just have to check the units to make sure they are okay. So we see grams and we see milliliters. So I'm just gonna check back up here and I see grams and milliliters. So these are okay. So that means I can just plug them in exactly how they show up. I don't need to do any conversions. We have 11.0 grams divided by 13.0 milliliters times 100%. And we get concentration is going to equal, in this case right here, 84.6% with, of course, our three significant digits. And that is it. So that is our three concentrations um, that we need to, or that you guys will be familiar with using. Like I said, the molar concentration is by far the more important one, and that can have the multiple steps to it. Um, but either way, practice makes perfect. So we have mixed concentration examples right here. Um, so it'll be an excellent time for you guys to try these, I believe, six. 
Um, that is it for concentration of ions. Concentration of ions is going to be our next lesson. So this is where I'm going to let you guys kind of try these on your own. Um, now, once you actually get them, make sure to check the answer key up on Google Classroom to see if you guys are getting these right. And if you're having any trouble with these mixed concentration examples, email me or you can save your questions until we have our Google Meet session uh, this Thursday. All right. Uh, so... Good luck. Please practice this um, as much as possible. Of course, use your workbooks. And next lesson, we are going to focus on concentration of ions. So I'll see you guys later.